Action. The Panama Papers shocked the world by exposing how some individuals, corporations, and government officials use tax havens to hide their wealth and evade paying taxes using shell companies. Did you know that these types of evasion tactics happen at sea too? And even in the fishing sector? Some fishing vessel operators take advantage of loopholes and weaknesses in international fisheries governance to mask their identity and make more profit. How? By carrying out their activities through countries with looser rules, using so-called flags of convenience. Wait, flags? Yes, flags. They can be a symbol of patriotism and a historical way of portraying a sense of belonging to a community, but they're also used to getting away with illegal or unregulated fishing. Let me give you some context. All vessels have a nationality. This is the country it's officially registered under and which has allowed the ship to fly its flag. This means from that moment on, that country is responsible for controlling the vessel's activities under national and international laws. This country should also provide effective enforcement no matter where in the ocean violations may occur. In an ideal world, so far so good. But what if vessel operators buy access to flags from countries that don't have the means or the political will to monitor what their flagged vessels are doing? That would mean that these vessels can pretty much do anything they want to do, including illegal and unregulated fishing, wouldn't it? A vessel using a flag of convenience is registered under a foreign flag that bears no association to the nationality of the vessel's owner or operator. Technically, there is a requirement under international law which says that there must be a genuine link between a vessel and the country whose flag it flies. In practice, this is not always the case, and vessels can pick which flag allows them to access new fishing grounds or evade fisheries rules or penalties. These countries may also allow ship owners to remain anonymous using shell companies, which makes it nearly impossible for authorities to find out who the real owners are. This leads to a massive lack of transparency that facilitates transnational organized crime, perpetuates corruption, and contributes to the over-exploitation of the oceans. But which are the most permissive flags? Those that every unscrupulous fishing operator wants to have. It's difficult to know how many fishing vessels are flying flags of convenience because the industry is highly opaque. But from the information that is publicly available though, Panama and St. Vincent and the Grenadines are examples of sweet tempting paradises for relaxation as well as lax fisheries control. If you follow the money, vessels operating under flags of convenience are often owned by companies based in Spain, Taiwan and China. But what can we do? Well, first, ban the use of flags of convenience by fishing vessels. Next, make public the real owners of vessels. They should be prevented from using shell companies to hide their identity, and those that do should not get access to services such as insurance. And lastly, require countries and other competent authorities to identify and impose sanctions against companies and individuals engaging in, supporting in, or benefiting from IUU fishing. As you can see, flags of convenience are a serious barrier to achieving transparency and accountability within the global fishing sector. Allowing them to exist extends a shady system from land to sea that can facilitate the evasion of the law and illegal or unregulated fishing.